and mastery and control. And the female script that came out as protective against having suicidal thoughts was Family Harmony. So, talk a little bit about the current study now. So, the first objective of our current study um, was to test the concurrent validity of the gender script questionnaire, particularly the three subscales I've mentioned fight and win, mastery and control, and family harmony, um, and to test those um, against validated methods of similar constructs. So, apart from the statistical process of testing the R value, um, what we really wanted to find out was why the gender script subscales were related to suicidality. So we wanted to do that by comparing their relationship to suicidality um, with the relationship of other similar questionnaires to suicidality um, and with the hope that any differences in those relationships um, would highlight important aspects of the gender script questionnaire. And the second objective of the current study was to assess how well the gender script questionnaire and the other factors that were in our survey actually predicted suicidality. So how well could you tell that a high score in one area um, would lead to higher thoughts of self-harm and suicide? So the variables used, our dependent variable to measure suicidality was the um, suicidal ladder by PayPal and colleagues, um, which is a five item measure of suicidal thinking. Um, and the predictive variables we used were the gender script questionnaire, unsurprisingly, um, the hyper-competitiveness attitude scale, the locus of control scale, and also two subscales of the British Social Attitude Survey. Okay, so the gender scripts, as I mentioned, the, there were the subscales that were um, significantly uh, related to suicidality in the background study. Um, the male subscales were fight and win. So an example of that is it's dog eat dog, so you have to be top dog. So it's all around competition. Um, the other subscale was mastery and control. So an example of that would be if you need help, you're weak. Um, so that's all around control. And the female subscale that was actually a protective factor against suicidality was family harmony. So an example of that would be raising a happy family is my true goal in life. So that ties in really interestingly to uh, what Warren was saying earlier about John Lennon, I think. <laughs> So the similar constructs that we've uh, measured things against, um, we've tested um, fight and win against the hyper-competitiveness attitude scale. Um, so this is a, a Likert scale measuring extreme competitiveness. I should say that the gender strip questionnaire actually uses a, a Likert scale as well. Um, and hyper-competitiveness, an example of that would be I compete with others even if they're not competing with me. So again, it's around extreme competition. Um, we've tested mastery of control against locus of control. Um, and locus of control is all about um, people's perceptions of control in various situations. Whether they think control is internal, so they have control over the direction their life is taking or the situation, or whether they think it's external, so either things are down to luck or chance or, or someone else's control. Um, family harmony, we've tested against two subscales of the British Social Attitude Survey, um, in particular traditional family role. So an example from that scale is um, all in all family life suffers when a woman has a full-time job. That's one of the statements there. Um, and the other, the other um, subscale is family uh, children values. Sorry. Um, so an example for that would be um, watching children grow up is life's greatest joy. In terms of method, um, it's a, this study is a validation of um, the previous subscales um, and it's a, it's a cross-sectional online survey. So we've done the analysis in SPSS and we've used um, Pearson's correlation coefficient and multiple linear regression. Um, and we've recruited our participants online. Uh, the survey was created online in um, Toolkit, which I know someone mentioned earlier. It's a really great free online tool you can use for creating um, psychological surveys and experiments. So results, the exciting bit. Um, again, uh, this is preliminary results, so um, our study is still live. We'll have full results later in the year. Um, and initially, just to say that we have had more women than men complete the survey, which I think would be anticipated by a lot of people in the room. 
Um, and also the median age has been quite low, of around 22 years. Um, and a, a key reason for that is the websites um, that we're using to recruit. Um, a few of them will be likely to um, attract psychology undergraduate students who are mainly women and will likely to be um, a bit younger as well, so that kind of explains the demographic. So the first part of our analysis focused on exploring the concurrent validity of the gender scripts, the, the subscales, with the similar constructs. So we found that fight and win and hyper competitiveness had a good concurrent validity um, with an R value of 0.48. And also family values showed strong concurrent validity um, with the subscales of the British Social Attitude Survey um, with an R value of 0.65. Um, and also interestingly for those, when we um, broke the initial analysis down into male and female participants, um, they actually showed that the male scripts um, had a stronger relationship for the male participants and the female scripts had a stronger relationship for the female participants. Um, so we'll explore that more when we've got the full data set. Um, and we actually found that mastery and control and locus of control had very little um, concurrent validity, so they don't appear to be measuring the same thing. And the second part of our analysis um, focused on how much the gender script questionnaire and the other elements were predictive of suicidal thoughts um, and thoughts of self-harm. So fight and win subscale um, with a p-value of 0.04 um, was actually a stronger predictor of suicidality than the hypercompetitiveness scale, um, which only had a p-value of 0.233, so that actually wasn't predictive of suicidality. Um, and the British Social Attitude Survey was a stronger predictor of suicidality um, than the Family Harmony subscale of the gender script questionnaire, but they were both um, very predictive, so um, British Social Attitude Survey p-value was less than 0.01, um, and for Family Harmony, it was 0.033. Um, and interestingly, although we realised they didn't measure the same thing, uh, both mastery of control and locus of control, um, they were um, really predictive of suicidality in their own rights. They're not measuring the same thing, but they're both important predictors of, of suicidal thoughts. So just a bit of discussion about those results. Um, so. The fact that fight and win initially um, was uh, a high score and fight and win was predictive of suicidality, that, that replicates the findings of the original study. Um, and although fight and win and hypercompetitiveness were well correlated, um, fight and win was predictive of suicidality but hypercompetitiveness wasn't. Um, the reason we thought for that was um, basically uh, the, the main focus of the fight and win script within the gender script subscale. Um, is around kind of important areas of life such as work um, and the main focus of the hyper competitiveness scale um, was around uh, games and athletic competition so it could be that it's more risky to be extremely competitive um, in situations that are more value laden and that might be why one is predicting of suicidal thoughts and the other is not. So for mastery and control and locus of control again they were measuring different things um, but they were both really important predictors of suicidality. So we suggest that mastery and control is more about um, internal control of your own emotions. So not wanting to show emotion um, and keeping control of yourself, basically. Whereas locus of control is more about how much control someone perceives they have over their life. Um, both of those facets of control seem really important. So the more important someone feels it is to control their own emotions, the more likely they'll have suicidal, um, potentially have thoughts of suicide. And the less in control of people's lives they feel they are, so the more they think control is outside or down to luck, the more likely they are to have thoughts uh, of self-harm and suicide. Um, family harmony. Again, both um, Family Harmony and the subscales of the British Social Attitude Survey were, um, they were well correlated to one another and they were both um, really strong predictors um, of a protective factor against suicide. Um, and I know I spoke earlier about there being um, relatively little background in the area, um, but in terms of sociological research, there's quite a good grounding for the argument that family values have um, a protective factor in guarding men against suicide. Um, so in 1897, uh, Durkheim's study looked at the links 
um, between men being unmarried and without children and higher suicide rates. Um, and more recently, Olaf uh, and colleagues study in 2012 looked at how having a masculine protector role or a father role um, enabled men to avoid suicide and also um, crucially enabled them to position um, help seeking uh, as a wise and rational action to protect their family. So from our preliminary analysis, um, main results so far, um, the gender script questionnaire is a useful predictor of suicidality. Um, and overall, the study highlights the importance of looking at gender-typical thought patterns in measuring and preventing suicide. Um, and there may well be useful clinical applications as well. So I just want to finish up by talking about the potential clinical applications, um, particularly in the area of suicide risk assessment, um, areas to explore in therapy, and monitoring and measuring progress over time. Um, so the gender script questionnaire could be used as a simple extra tool um, for assessing suicide risk. So this would be in addition to um, asking people how they feel, which, is, which tends to be um, a helpful measure as well. Um, but the thing is, people sometimes won't want to answer honestly when they're asked questions about thoughts about self-harm and suicide. Although it's getting better, there's still a lot of stigma around that area. So having indirect measures could just be a useful extra tool. Um, and obviously you heard Louise presenting a few moments ago um, the results from her survey in which 16% of her male respondents said that they wouldn't seek help if they had a mental health problem. Um, so having an indirect measure for those people who do seek help, um, you know, it seems sensible. Um, in terms of actual areas in therapy, so it provides some potential areas that therapists could look at to explore with people who have these traditional kind of scripted ways of thinking. So for example, exploring the meaning of fighting and winning and maybe reframing that to help people feel that they are fighting and winning in life. Um, or looking at family values, um, either as a potential deficit, um, or you know, where people have a, a family network in place, is looking to um, tie that into treatment goals. Um, and again, there's been other pieces of research within the male psychology network that have been looking at the importance of gender difference um, when it comes to therapy. Um, for those of you that were here yesterday, you'll have heard Kate Holloway speaking about her um, piece of qualitative research which was exploring our therapists' views on the difference between um, men and women in therapy. And I know Louise alluded it to it as well, um, that they felt men would be more likely to want a quick fix from therapy and women would be more likely to want to explore. So it was that difference between the solution focus and the emotion focus. Um, so basically, the more information we have for therapists, then the more tools they have to, to help formulate um, good interventions for people. Um, and finally, the gender script questionnaire could be used to measure progress over time. So obviously it's a quantitative measure, it uses a Likert scale, so you would hope um, as therapy goes on and time goes on, um, you can see some difference um, in, in scores and hopefully with an improvement um, in the way people are responding as well. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to me.